Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Recent news headlines have pronounced that renowned physicist Stephen Hawking now claims there are no black holes. A closer examination of Hawking's recent paper reveals this is not the case. Rather, he proposes a revision of black hole theory, which dispels of the so-called event horizon, a boundary from which nothing, not even light, can escape. However, lost in the discussion are numerous foundational problems with black hole theory. Far from the spotlight of the science media, mathematician Stephen Crothers has challenged the underpinnings of black holes and general relativity. What does Stephen make of Hawking's proposed revision of black hole theory and the countless questions that popular media have yet to ask? In a paper dated uh, the 22nd of January 2014 bearing the title Information Preservation and Weather Forecasting for Black Holes, Stephen Hawking has not claimed that, that black holes don't exist. He has now proposed that the event horizons of alleged black holes do not exist and uh, that only apparent horizons form when gravitational collapse of a body such as a star produces a black hole. He's proposed his uh, black hole apparent horizon in an attempt to prove that there are no black hole firewalls. Hawking retains all other alleged properties of black holes and still invokes uh, quantum theory to claim that black holes evaporate by means of Hawking radiation. With his newfangled notions, Hawking seeks to now redefine black holes. He says in his paper that the absence of event horizons means that there are no black holes in the sense of uh, regimes from which light can't escape to infinity. There are, however, apparent horizons which persist for a period of time. This suggests that black holes should be redefined as metastable bound states of the gravitational field. Note that Hawking alludes here to the existence of black hole escape velocity. It's routinely claimed on the one hand that black holes have an escape velocity and that this escape velocity is equal to or greater than the speed of light in vacuum. If you toss a ball into the air, does it escape from the Earth? No. Does it leave the surface of the Earth? Yes. It goes up and then comes back down. So escape velocity doesn't mean that matter can't leave, only that it can't escape if its launch speed is less than the escape speed. I'll read from the Collins Encyclopedia of the Universe published in 2001. Black hole, a massive object so dense that no light or any other radiation can escape from it. Its escape speed exceeds the speed of light. I'll now read from the Dictionary of Geophysics, Astrophysics and Astronomy published in 2001. Black hole, a region of space-time from which the escape velocity exceeds the velocity of light. So it's claimed that black holes have an escape velocity. However, on the other hand, it's also routinely claimed that black holes suck matter in so that matter can only go into a black hole and nothing can come out of it, including light. The black hole event horizon is said to be a one-way membrane, a boundary from which nothing can even leave. I'll read uh, from Hawking's paper, or book rather, uh, The Theory of Everything, The Origin and Fate of the Universe, published in 2002. I had already discussed with Roger Penrose the idea of defining a black hole as a set of events from which it is not possible to escape to a large distance. It means that the boundary of the black hole, the event horizon, is formed by rays of light that just fail to get away from the black hole. Instead, they stay forever hovering on the edge of the black hole. So it's routinely claimed that black holes both have and do not have an escape velocity at the same time. But that's impossible. It's also important to note that escape velocity is an implicit two-body relation. One body escapes from another body. There's no meaning to escape velocity in a model of the universe that contains only one mass. And such a model bears no relation to reality anyhow. But all alleged black holes are universes which contain only one mass. Despite this, proponents of black holes and big bangs allege untold numbers of black holes present in an expanding big bang universe. Now, there are four alleged types of black hole universe, and there are three alleged types of Big Bang universes. However, proponents of black holes and Big Bangs never specify what type of black hole in what type of Big Bang they allege. For instance, it's claimed that there is a black hole at Sagittarius A star. What type of black hole in what type of Big Bang universe pertains to Sagittarius A star? They never say. This is always the case. Hawking's latest paper really changes nothing. 
because each and every alleged type of black hole and each and every alleged type of Big Bang are different and independent universes that can't be blended in order to manufacture multiple black holes in some Big Bang universe. In his paper, Hawking refers to an asymptotically curved black hole universe, the so-called Schwarzschild anti Sitter universe. This universe is asymptotically anti Sitter space-time. Hawking also mentions the Kerr black hole universe, the Schwarzschild, Rise in the Nordstrom, Kerr and Kerr-Newman black hole universes are all asymptotically flat universes. Another failure of modern cosmology that Crothers claims to have proved is the mutually exclusive nature of black holes versus the Big Bang expanding universe. Astronomers and astrophysicists may claim, quote, discoveries of black holes without specifying the theoretical conditions required for the black holes to exist. I'd like everybody to consider this. All alleged black hole universes are spatially infinite, are eternal, contain only one mass, are not expanding, and are either asymptotically flat or asymptotically curved. However, all alleged Big Bang universes are either spatially finite in one case or spatially infinite in two different cases, are of finite age, contain radiation and many masses, are expanding, and are not asymptotically anything. So it's now quite evident that all alleged black hole universes contradict all alleged Big Bang universes, and so they can't coexist. They're mutually exclusive by their very definitions. In fact, no alleged black hole universe can be blended with any alleged Big Bang universe, with other black hole universes, or with itself. Similarly, no alleged Big Bang universe can be blended with any alleged black hole universe, with any other Big Bang universe, or with itself. This is easily reaffirmed by the principle of superposition. General relativity is a nonlinear theory. Consequently, in general relativity, the principle of superposition is invalid. For example, let X be some alleged black hole universe, and let Y be some alleged Big Bang universe then the linear combination or superposition X plus Y is not a universe because the principle of superposition doesn't hold in general relativity. Moreover, X and Y pertain to entirely different sets of Einstein field equations and so they have nothing whatsoever to do with one another. Presumably, Hawking has still retained his Big Bang dogma with his latest black holes. So he still has unspecified types of black holes all over the place inside some unspecified Big Bang expanding universe, notwithstanding that black hole universes and Big Bang universes can't be superposed. Superposition violates the mathematical structure of the general theory of relativity. Consequently, Hawking's latest paper is just as nonsensical as all his previous writings on black holes and Big Bangs. The phrase science by press release describes the confident pronouncements that sometimes masquerade as definitive science discoveries. The likelihood of the general public being misled on complex issues increases in the absence of independent verification of scientists' claims. The problem with modern physics, and particularly astrophysics and particle physics, is that experiments are conducted and they're one-off experiments. None of these experiments can be reproduced by anybody because no one has a spare few billion dollars to be able to spend on a project to replicate the experiments. In science, uh, experiments are supposed to be able to be replicated by independent people so that the results of any reports on the experiments can be verified or refuted. This is not the case uh, with experiments that cost billions of dollars. Science is supposed to proceed by experiments that are able to be reproduced by independent parties in different laboratories. Well, this is not happening anymore. So science now relies upon one experiment or two experiments from the very same party with the very same machine and with, that, with any, no other scientists having access to that machine to be able to do any uh, experiments with it. Consequently, we get one, a biased set of information, and this can't form the basis of any science at all, either experimental or theoretical. Mathematics and, and physics are not the same. Mathematical manipulations don't necessarily correspond to anything physical. 
this needs to be determined by experiment and we now have a situation where we can't do that. Despite what is being observed, things are assigned to them simply because of the way science now believes things. For instance, black holes are found everywhere now. They're at the centres of galaxies. They're floating around all over the place. They have different sizes. They're from micro size up to ultra super massive size. But the fact remains that nobody has ever found a black hole. All alleged reports of black hole discoveries only pertain to things that they say are black holes because it's a belief system. So the problem is with all of these experiments, nobody can verify anything and must rely upon what one party says. So all the money that's being spent on these experiments is not forwarding science at all and is in fact limiting science to certain dogmatic views that one can't use any experimental data to confirm or deny. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info. Light of the science media, mathematician Stephen Crothers has challenged the underpinnings of black holes and general relativity. What does Stephen make of Hawking's proposed revision of black hole theory and the countless questions that popular media have yet to ask? In a paper dated uh, the 22nd of January, it uses a black hole. He's proposed his uh, black hole apparent horizon in an attempt to prove that there are no black hole firewalls. Hawking retains all other alleged properties of black holes and still invokes uh, quantum theory to claim that black holes evaporate by means of Hawking radiation. With his newfangled notions, Hawking... Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Recent news headlines have pronounced that renowned physicist Stephen Hawking now claims there are no black holes. A closer examination of Hawking's recent paper revealed 2014 bearing the title Information Preservation and Weather Forecasting for Black Holes, Stephen Hawking has not claimed that, that black holes don't exist. He has now proposed that the event horizons of alleged black holes do not exist and uh, that only apparent horizons form when gravitational collapse of a body such as a star reveals this is not the case. Rather, he proposes a revision of black hole theory, which dispels of the so-called event horizon, a boundary from which nothing, not even light, can escape. However, lost in the discussion are numerous foundational problems with black hole theory. Far from the spot.